Hey y'all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be answering the question, is Python actually more popular than JavaScript in 2024? So GitHub recently released their yearly stats roundup for 2024, linked here, claiming that Python has overtaken JavaScript as the most popular language for the first time in 10 years. This has naturally led to a lot of discussion as JavaScript is the language of the web and it seems odd that it could be dethroned at all. So here we're going to take a closer look at that claim and see if Python is actually more popular than JavaScript. All right, so GitHub claims Python is more popular than JavaScript. So first let's take a look at GitHub's claims and some of the data that they showed so we can kind of have an understanding of like, what do they mean when they say that it's more popular? And so this first graph is like the most widely, you know, passed around one. And basically it's the top programming languages on GitHub. Now if you look at the subtitle, it says ranked by count of distinct users contributing to projects of each language. We'll go into some specifics about why this metric is maybe a little um, odd, potentially misleading. Um, but for now, let's just go over the data that they're showing. So here they show that Python is in first and then JavaScript. We see TypeScript in third, then Java, C Sharp, C++, PHP, Shell, C, and Go. So no real surprises here. Um, maybe odd that Shell's so high. Um, but clearly, you know, the top three are going to be Python, JavaScript, and TypeScript, and there's really no contest there. The next graph I wanted to show you from their post is the top five languages most commonly used in repositories created within the last 12 months on GitHub. And so they're trying to calculate, like, um, what is the most popular languages for new repositories, which... I guess is an interesting view into like where trends are going for new projects. And so here we see that JavaScript wins by like a long shot. This is almost like six and a half million with Python at like 4 million. So it's like 50% larger. Um, Python is, you know, here in second with 4 million, Java down in third, TypeScript in fourth, and C Sharp in fifth. And so again, it's really like JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, um, and, but in here JavaScript is way outpacing Python. And so I think the takeaways I want you to get from this like kind of overview of their graphs is that the top language is likely gonna be JavaScript or Python. Those are really the, the two that do the best in, in both of these views. Second, the metrics that they're ranking by are not the most straightforward, right? You would maybe think that they would do an aggregation of things, but they're kind of doing like what they do in sports a lot where they're like doing these odd slices that show something. Um, but depending on the slice, the perspective is maybe a little skewed. And this is like, you know, so-and-so shot the most three-pointers on a Tuesday in March after, you know, there's been a solar eclipse or something. Like really weird cuts that like seem cool, but like weird perspective. Okay, so now we've seen like the graphs that they showed. Um, and now I wanna dive into how GitHub actually ranks language popularity based on like the fine print of their post. And so now that we know about these rankings that GitHub presented, we've looked at the graphs and stuff, let's take a closer look at this fine print and see how they produced their overall rankings. And so GitHub says, we look at the totality of activity across commits, issues, pull requests, comments on issues and pull requests, discussions, push code and reviewed pull requests among other things. And so from this, it seems like any action a user takes in a repo will be counted. However, what they don't say is that it also seems like it's aggregated by distinct user based on their charts. And so no action after the first counts. And so here, it seems that this metric is prioritizing the breadth of contributions, not the depth. If you were to make a thousand contributions in a single project, it seems like that would just count as one because you are one distinct user contrib tr contributing to the project. So if someone else makes two contributions in two projects, they will count as more than you because they will be counted as two distinct users in the projects. And now I wanna caveat that it's hard to like verify these claims because we cannot see the raw data and GitHub does not clarify a lot of their calculations. We're just kind of going off the fine print that they do provide, but based on the views and how very small tweaks to this seem to vastly change which language is on top, it seems to be that this is the case. Another thing I wanna point out is that we don't see a definition of what a project in the language means. Is it the majority language? And if so, what percent does it need to be to do this? Now, for many projects, this may not matter too much as you know the majority language likely is the correct language. You know, Most repos, especially smaller ones, will just be one main thing and there will be one main language they're using, even if there's like 
some side files here and there. But for some projects that use monorepos across front end and back end, this may not be an accurate count. And I think some examples of this are like if you're building a monolith that's full stack, maybe your, your back end's like Django. Um, so that will obviously be Python. But if your front end is like React and JavaScript, um, then that would probably say that a good 20 to 30% of your code is React and JavaScript. And so does that count as a JS project or is it just Python? I don't know the answers to these, but it's something to think about, especially as more um, projects move to mono repos where they're gonna have like several monoliths in there. And is it just like, you know, whatever the largest one gets all the points for this? Um, hard to say, but it may not lead to an accurate count depending on which way they go for this. Okay, so we kind of have an understanding of like, what did GitHub say? How are they trying to calculate this? And now we've got to try to answer, is Python actually more popular than JavaScript in 2024? And so GitHub certainly seems to think so, but it depends how you calculate these things as to which one comes out on top. And so if you look at the code pushes without the other GitHub actions, like the PRs, the comments, and the issues, then JS comes out on top. So from GitHub, notably JavaScript still ranks first for code pushes alone. More developers still use JavaScript more often to push code. But in absolute activity across all contribution types on GitHub, Python now outranks JavaScript. And I think this seems to go back to the metric they're using with distinct user contributions. It seems to prioritize breadth of contributions, not depth. It feels like someone who's pushing a thousand commits to a repo depth should count more than someone who's just like posted a comment or created an issue in three different projects. But based on you know the read of the metrics and the data they've provided about how it's calculated, it seems like that person that's just made three issues or comments outranks the person with a thousand code pushes. So again, breadth over depth. Another look is if you combine JavaScript and TypeScript, JavaScript comes out on top. And so from GitHub, while Python is increasing in contributor counts for both code push activity alone and other activity faster than JavaScript, it is not increasing in those faster than JavaScript and TypeScript combined. Rather than a slowdown in the JavaScript community, what we are seeing is a transition to TypeScript for a large proportion of new commits. And so basically what they're saying is like, people aren't leaving the JavaScript community, they're instead just moving to TypeScript, which is like a flavor of JavaScript, if you will. And I think, you know, JavaScript and TypeScript are different languages. Like they are different. We like know that that's fine, but they also are largely the same ecosystem, right? Like if you're running JavaScript, like you're often running Node or Dino or, or Bun or something, right? And you're using a lot of the same builds tools uh, to run your web server and stuff. And so yes, different language, but same ecosystem. And so on the one hand, it does make sense to track them separately. You know, a lot of people are moving to TypeScript because what we want is JavaScript, but with types. But on the other hand, they're kind of the same thing. And so it's kind of disingenuous to not show them an aggregate. And to be fair, GitHub does call this out that like they are the same basically, and really they're just, you know, showing them in the graphs differently, but you should consider them the same. Um, but if you combine them, you know, JavaScript comes out on top. And finally, if you look at Stack Overflow's dev survey, it puts JavaScript over Python. So Stack Overflow's 2024 dev survey has JavaScript beating out Python by a cool 10% of respondents, which is like, you know, a huge amount. Um, the survey obviously has its own problems. You know, it's small in, it's always kind of subjective on like what people are clicking, what they think that the questions actually mean. And it's probably skewed more towards like experienced programmers that like look out for this thing as well. So it has its own problems, but I do think it goes to show that depending on how you calculate these ratings, how you are splitting up the data, JavaScript can easily come out on top and by a very large portion. Next. So big picture, it doesn't really matter if Python or JavaScript is the most popular language on GitHub. They're both hugely popular with very mature ecosystems and there's really no signs of that slowing down anytime soon. At the end of the day, you should pick the best tool for the job and you know, that you ideally like using and go from there. Now, if you like this post, you might also like five reasons F Sharp is a great Python alternative for scripting, side projects, and enterprise applications. You might also be interested in a brief comparison of modern programming languages, TypeScript versus Golang versus Elixir versus Rust versus F Sharp. And finally, you might be interested in why I'm moving from SvelteKit to F Sharp, which is how I've been building most of my web apps for the past few years. Um, outside of the, you know, JavaScript web app framework. Uh, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.